Good morning, scholars, and welcome back to Learning with Mrs. Preeby. Today we are working on a new nation, Lesson 9, titled, Never Leave Until Tomorrow What You Can Do Today. Today's learning goal is, I can explain the meaning of the saying, never leave until tomorrow what you can do today, and use it in appropriate context. I'm trying to think, this was yesterday's story. Let's think about what this story was about. There we go. Hmm. What was it called? Yesterday's story was a birth of a new nation. And I remember that it was about the founding fathers of our country and how they helped to write the new rules for our country to live by. Those rules were called the Constitution. And I also remember that George Washington here, he became the first president of the United States. Mm -hmm. And then, let's see, I can remember that the name of the capital of our new country was called Washington, D.C. That's where the capital still is today. I remember that. Let's see. In today's read aloud, you're going to learn more about Benjamin Franklin. Let's see if we can figure out which one was Benjamin Franklin again. I think he's, he's here. He's here. He's here in this picture. I see Benjamin Franklin there. When I look down here, I see Benjamin Franklin again right here. Okay. So let's think about some things we already know about Benjamin Franklin. Hmm, let me think. He was a representative in the Continental Congress. And I remember he traveled to Great Britain to try to defend the colonies. He was sent by the Continental Congress to France to ask for help with the Revolutionary War. I remember that. Also know that he was one of our founding fathers and helped to write the Constitution. I remember that. Benjamin Franklin was both a writer and a venter. So we know that authors write books. But writers write more than just books. Sometimes they write newspaper articles... They write, like Thomas Jefferson wrote legal documents. Sometimes they write um, magazine articles. So writers can write a lot of things. Now, authors are one kind of writers. Okay. And he was an inventor. And an inventor is somebody who makes things that haven't been, haven't been made yet. That there isn't one. So listen carefully to find out two things, at least one thing that Benjamin Franklin wrote, and at least one thing that he invented. Like George Washington, Benjamin Franklin was one of the founding fathers of our country. He was never a president, but he was a very wise man with wonderful ideas. Benjamin Franklin was wise because he used his intelligence to make good choices and do clever things. You will remember that Franklin was part of the Continental Congress, a signer of the Declaration of Independence, and a representative of our country in both Great Britain and France. He was all over the place. Long before his days in government, Benjamin Franklin was a successful businessman in Philadelphia. He, always, he had always been a, great, a good reader and writer, and as a boy, he was an apprentice to his brother's printing shop in Boston. So apprentice is someone who is learning how to do a job from someone who is an expert at that job. So when he moved to Philadelphia, Franklin set up his own printing shop and started his own newspaper, eventually becoming the busiest printer in the American colonies.
For more than 25 years, Benjamin Franklin published a series of books called Poor Richard's Almanac. Benjamin Franklin spelled his almanac in the old-fashioned way right here. Almanac with a CK. But most people spell almanac today without the K. They just have the C on the end. His almanac was often the only book that people bought. It contained lots of practical information that they wanted to know. For example, the almanac had a calendar with the times of sunrise and sunset. Today, we listen to weather forecasts on the radio or television. But back then, people looked in their almanacs to find out what the weather would be like. The almanac had stories and poems as well as puzzles and jokes and lots of advice. Franklin included many wise sayings, many of which we still use today. Have you ever heard anyone say, never leave until tomorrow what you can do today? What do you think that means? Hmm. Franklin must have lived by his own words because he got so much done. He was never still for a minute. His brain was working constantly, spilling over with questions and ideas. Benjamin Franklin had keen interest in science and the way things work. As a young boy in Boston, Benjamin spent much of his time swimming in the harbor. Let's see, what else did we learn about the Boston Harbor? All right, we learned about the Boston Tea Party. Mm -hmm. He was pretty good, but he wanted to be even better and faster. One day, he thought of a way he could be a fast swimmer. He found some wood and carved some wooden panels, paddles to fit over his hands and feet. Kind of like flippers that divers use today. When he swam this, with those, he was much faster, probably faster than all the other children his age. As Benjamin Franklin grew older, he continued to invent new things. Every time he saw a problem, he tried to invent a way to fix it. He had two pairs of glasses, one for reading and one for helping him to see things far away. He didn't like having to switch glasses all day long, so he asked the glass cutter to slice his lenses, all of his lenses in half. He made one new pair of glasses with the distance lens on top and the close-up lenses on the bottom. Franklin had just invented bifocal glasses, still worn by many people today. While sitting by the fire one night, Benjamin Franklin watched warm air disappearing up the chimney and wondered how he could trap more warm air inside the house. He made a wood-burning stove out of iron. So Franklin's stove was very similar to this iron stove you see here. It put out twice as much heat as a regular fireplace and burned less wood. The stove was named for the Franklin stove after its inventor. Lightning was another thing that fascinated Benjamin Franklin. He had watched houses and barns burn to the ground when struck by lightning. Could it be, he wondered, that lightning was electricity? He was going to find out. A legend about Franklin's experiment with a kite during a lightning storm goes like this. One day, Franklin took his son, William, out in the middle of a thunderstorm with a lightning raging all around them. He tied a little metal key near the end of his a kite string. So right here's the little key, and right there's the kite string. Okay. The kite is at the other end of this string right here, just outside of the picture. This this right here is a very, very dangerous thing for for Benjamin Franklin to do. He was extremely lucky not to have gotten hurt during this experiment. Okay. Franklin was pretty sure that if lightning was electricity, Flying the kite in the thunderstorm would cause the key to become charged with electricity. He 
kept touching the key as the kite flew above their heads. As fibers of the kite string stood on end, Franklin felt a little shock. He was right. Lightning was electricity. Franklin used his discovery to invent the lightning rod, a pole that helps carry electricity away from buildings and into the ground. His invention, or creation, is used today to prevent fires caused by lightning strikes. So the word strikes in this sentence means flashes of light that are produced in the sky during a storm. The word strike can also mean to hit something with force, such as a drum. So let's see, we're on page 71. Let's see if we can find that down here. Here it is. So this is a lightning strike. And this is the other kind of strike to hit something. <coughs> Benjamin Franklin's list of inventions go on and on. The next time you rock back and forth in a rocking chair, thank Brenda Franklin for helping you relax. This clever man invented the rocking chair. In 1790, just three years after Benjamin Franklin helped to write the Constitution for our country, he died peacefully in his sleep at the age of 84. 20,000 people attended his funeral. At the time, the biggest funeral ever held in Philadelphia. Bells rang and flags flew at half-mass as a sign of respect for one of America's greatest hero, heroes. So if you look at the picture, you're going to see this flag right here is flying half mass or halfway up the flagpole. So here's the bottom, about halfway, there's the top, the flag is flying half mast. So let's think about what we just read. I'm wondering what what was it that one, one thing that Benjamin Franklin wrote? Let's go back and see if we can find what he wrote. There it is. Poor Richard's Almanac right here. Franklin's Almanac was the only book that some families owned. The Almanac had stories and poems as well as puzzles and jokes and lots of advice and wise saying. I wonder what part of the Almanac you would have read. Would it have been the stories or the jokes, maybe? I don't know. What did Benjamin Franklin do as an apprentice? Here he is. Uh, he practiced writing as an apprentice in his brother's print shop. So if you were an apprentice learning to do something, to whom would you want to be an apprentice? Hmm. Let's show you this picture right here. Right here, these are trolleys. These are tr trains that people ride on. They have an apprenticeship program where people learn how to be mechanics on those trains. Okay. What are some of the things that Benjamin Franklin invented? Well, let's see. Let's look back. Oh, that's right. He invented these wooden paddles. I'll bet you remembered that. Or maybe remember he invented bifocal glasses like Mrs. Preby wears. Um, he did invent this wood burning stove called the Franklin stove. Right, with the electricity. He invite, invented the lightning rod. He invented this, the rocking chair. He did not invent the half mass flag, no.
In this read aloud, you heard Benjamin Franklin was never president, but he was a very wise man with wonderful ideas. Say the word wise. Wise means that you use knowledge, experience, insight to make good decisions. I think the painter was wise to clean his paintbrush when the job was done. I want you to think of a wise person that you know. You're going to tell why that person is wise. So you're going to pause the visit video and talk about why somebody you know is wise. Make sure you use the word wise and complete sentences and then go ahead and come back. Did you pause the video? Did you tell somebody about a wise person? I'll bet you did. I wonder if you remembered to use a whole sentence when you talk to them. So I'm going to say a few things that might be an example of a wise person. If it is, you're going to say he or she is a wise person. If it's an example of somebody not being a wise person, you're going to say he or she is not wise. So someone who eats a whole chocolate cake, she is not wise. Someone who brushes his teeth after dinner, he is wise. Someone who treats p other people kindly, she is wise. Someone who doesn't wear a coat in cold weather, he is not wise. Someone who goes inside during thunderstorms, she is wise. Okay, Proverbs are short traditional sayings that have been passed along orally from generation to generation. These sayings usually express general truths based on experiences and observations of everyday life. Although some proverbs do have literal meanings, that is, they mean exactly what they say, many proverbs have richer meanings beyond the literal level. Re Let's see. Benjamin Franklin was a wise man. Tell him he, he, he used his almanac to publish wise sayings or proverbs for others to read. One of the sayings he used is similar to the title of the read aloud you heard today. Never leave until tomorrow what you can do today. Hmm. Go ahead and say that with me. Never leave until tomorrow what you can do today. Proverb, this proverb is another way of explaining that often when you put off doing things, you give yourself more work. For example, if you don't put your toys away today, there are going to be more toys to put away tomorrow. Okay, I want you to think of other examples of why you would not want to leave something off until tomorrow, what you can do today. Go ahead and send me a dojo message with some of those ideas. Okay, I want you to remember three details you learned about Benjamin Franklin today. Go ahead and draw three separate pictures on one piece of paper about some of the things you learned, and then write one sentence about each thing you choose to draw. Take a picture of that and upload it to Class Dojo for me. Okay. Today's learning wall was I can explain the meaning of the saying, never leave until tomorrow what you can do today, and use it in appropriate context. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Let's see what's tomorrow's story. When we read the story, building a nation with words and ideas. Until then, have a great day.